well. So I think I found a laptop that can straight up compete with uh, my MacBook Air being a Mac user, just kind of straight up. I use that as my day-to-day -day laptop, obviously testing a ton of Windows devices. This is probably one of the better ones, uh, obviously chassis-wise that I've used. So this is the brand new Galaxy Book 4 Pro. This one's the 360 degree one, so this can theoretically fold all the way around. You can use it in tent mode. Would I pay that extra? I think it's like $100 to have this. Probably not. I would just recommend the Galaxy Book 4 Pro, but if you're an artist, if you love to use the tablet, it does come with an S Pen. I think this is a great option. But like I said, I think this spec is perfect for that everyday user, someone that wants Windows, someone that just wants to get stuff done. If you're into editing, if you're into content creation, you know, as long as you're keeping it on the lighter side, nothing too crazy like 4K, 8K stuff. Watching content, everything on this beautiful OLED display looks absolutely gorgeous. Think of this as like a Mac book, you know, Air, the larger one. This is a 16 inch model with an OLED panel and obviously windows and that says a lot. So first off with the chassis, it's all aluminum. There's no weird squeaks. It feels solid. I actually like the fact that Samsung's gone away from like that midnight, that dark blue color from last year. They've gone to just a standard silver. It helps hide fingerprints better. Even my M3 15 inch MacBook Air with the midnight color with that new anodization process to help with fingerprints, it doesn't actually help. It still collects a ton of them. Get something that's silver. It just hides the greasy fingerprints, hides smudges. It's just a lot better. I will say though, the one thing that I have noticed, the hinge mechanism. So comparing the two, this hinge is a lot looser and I'm not too sure if it's because I have the 360 degree model to get that into that tent mode. Obviously I'm um, using say like the MacBook Air that kind of just locks into place, but this is abnormally loose. Obviously most people won't be doing this with their laptop, but like I said, I think it's because this has the hinge, maybe another reason to get just the standard uh, 4 Pro. Profile wise, razor thin and on the ports, we still have a full size HDMI, which I like two USB-C ports. And on the other side, I love that they have still a standard USB-A and obviously a micro SD card slot. Maybe the only gripe is to kind of bump that up to full size. I think a lot of creators would love that. And obviously a headphone jack on the side. And on the inside, since this is a 16 inch display, we got a full size trackpad with a dedicated numpad on the side, which I'm always a fan of. Extra large trackpad, which is nice. It's just, I guess, technically off center on the chassis, but in line with the keyboard. It makes sense if you're using the trackpad, you can kind of rest your uh, palm here. But for the most part, when you're typing out emails, when you're writing up documents, it feels super comfortable. Obviously, chiclet style keyboard, which uh, just to keep that low uh, form factor and thin profile. So I would say the interesting part about this, it is using uh, the new Intel chipset inside. So it's the latest Meteor Lake, it's the Core Ultra 7. That's kind of their mid-range chipset, which uh, checks out. But the biggest improvement comes to the Arc uh, graphics, way better than uh, the previous gen integrated graphics. Does this run uh, AAA titles? No, maybe on some higher end titles, you can run them on lower graphics. But uh, to be honest, I personally am addicted to a game called Maple Story. It's this weird 2D MMO, which I used to play in high school. Log a couple hours, obviously the game uh, works perfectly fine on this. I kind of switch between that and uh, obviously getting work done, being productive. I think that's what uh, this kind of laptop is for or who it's suited towards. Everything else that you run on it is uh, very quick and snappy. I actually uh, edited a quick little vid, like the short form piece, like for reels, for YouTube shorts on this. That was fine. I'll share some Geekbench scores. I know that numbers uh, don't always reflect performance, but really in those integrated art graphics, you'll see a big jump. So for the book, for Ultra, that's where you get like a dedicated graphics card. I don't think most people should stray to the Ultra version unless you really need that extra processing power. This one should be fine. Weirdly enough though, this uh, kind of spec in Canada, you can get this with a 512 gig hard drive. For people in the US, it's only at one terabyte, 16 gigs of RAM. Unfortunately, you can't spec this up to uh, 32 gigs. I wish we saw that option. Most people will hold on to their laptop now for three, four, five years. I'd love to see the option to future-proof it, but you're paying around like $1,700, $2,000 for this machine. Canadian sadly shafted with the exchange $2,500, but like I said, at least we can spec it with 512 gigs, which is only 1,800 bucks. Like I said, I think the star of the show here has to be the OLED screen. It is absolutely gorgeous to watch uh, any sort of content. I've actually been uh, binge watching uh, Shogun on this. It looks great, those really dark scenes it obviously crushes the blacks really well. It just looks so inky. It's a 3K panel, 120 Hertz, of course, that touchscreen as well. So it has 
all the bells and whistles. Probably one of my favorite uh, laptop displays. Maybe only let down by this uh, small little bezel, but uh, you know, the webcam, it's only two megapixels. It is HD, but for most stuff, like I guess Zoom calls, Teams meetings, it will suffice, but uh, it's one thing that uh, is a bit lacking. Another thing is the speaker. So it's a quad speaker setup. Uh, they are downwards firing, so it doesn't give the best depth. Like, I think it could be like a bit deeper, a bit bass heavier. It just doesn't quite have that uh, depth that you'd expect for a larger machine. It's good, it's adequate. Most people usually rock headphones anyway, but once again, something to think about. Last but not least, uh, battery life. This is where, uh, you know, Apple computers still are kind of king of the castle. You're still looking at like 18 hours on the M3 MacBook Air. While I was using this, the most that I got was like 10, 11 hours with just very light use. Obviously, once you start to run games, anything heavy, I would drop like 40% uh, in an hour. I usually try to run this on the uh, optimized mode to help save battery, but still, Pretty good for a PC. The Meteor Lake chipset is obviously a lot more efficient, but uh, yeah, that is kind of my nutshell review of the new Galaxy Book uh, 4 Pro, obviously the 360. It's honestly been a great day-to-day -day laptop. The build on it is something that I've been super impressed with. Obviously the form factor, it's still super light, still super portable, kind of crunches through uh, my regular stuff. I would definitely recommend this uh, to most people. Windows laptop, it's like a MacBook, but has a better display. And I think that is a pretty, high praise. Let me know your thoughts down below. There are a couple drawbacks like that wobbly screen. I wish you could put 32 gigs of RAM in this, but um, I think it is a pretty solid package. I'll catch the rest of you in uh, one of my next vids and uh, let me know if you would take this or an M3 uh, MacBook Air. Peace.